right guys, back in the garage. We have tons of stuff to get done on the M3. And one of the things I actually wanted to get knocked out was something that I actually did on my STI. This was a very, very popular modification. I was one of the people that kind of introduced it to the Subaru world. They were somewhat popular before I uh, actually installed this on my STI. But after making videos on it and everything, kind of introducing some people to this modification, it became a big hit in the Subaru world. And a lot of people love that. And one of the greatest things about this company that I'm going to kind of talk about in a little bit is that they started going into the Euro world. They started dipping into the BMWs. And I'm very, very excited because not only uh, did I just obviously get an M3, but I have an opportunity to kind of introduce this to the BMW world. So very, very excited to announce that I am installing a lower class garage front chassis bar. Now I installed a very similar one on the STI, I'll throw up some pictures for you guys. I had it in white, it was actually championship white if I recall the actual color, and it was beautiful. And what that actually did was it added some color to the front of the bumper. Now on the STI, there was no front chassis bar whatsoever. Installing one in that car was a complete addition to the car. But on the F80, or on the M3 I should say, M4, there's already a chassis bar installed, a stock one. It's nothing to write home about. Obviously, it's not the prettiest thing. It's just a piece of metal kind of in there and you don't notice it at all. And tying two points together always increases rigidity, increases the performance. No, not to say that changing over to the lower class garage one is going to really change the overall performance, but it's much better quality. And I think we could all admit this looks way better than that. So that is what we're going to be installing tonight. One of the greatest things about this is that it uses all factory holes, all factory hardware, so you don't need anything else uh, that's included with the kit. You can pick whatever color you want. You can get white, red, green, black, whatever color you want. This color that Lower Class Garage and I both decided on is called Illusion Light Blue. It is by a company called Prismatic Powders. Very, very nice color. And the reason why I went with that is because of the engine bay. I have some nice Golden Wrench Supply blue accents in the engine bay. I don't like to do the accent color all over the car, but just in certain places where it kind of, you know, you can tell everything kind of flows very nicely and it looks really good. As I mentioned, I did white on my STI. I had white engine bay caps. I actually had a uh, brake kit in white that matched as well. So it was a really nice touch. Everything flowed really nicely. And the really cool thing about the F80 brakes is that they are blue. It is a different color blue, but it's close enough where you're not going to really notice it and it's still going to tie in very nicely. Uh, and plus it's not right next to each other, so you're not going to really notice the color difference. But that was not my main goal. So the main color I wanted to match was the caps. If we bring this close up to the caps, it is pretty much a dead color match, which is pretty crazy. Obviously this has metallic in it and that is anodized aluminum, so it's obviously hard to match perfectly, but very, very close, and uh, I couldn't be happier with the match. Really excited to install this. Uh, what we actually gotta do is remove the front bumper, remove a few things to get to that support brace, and then we can install it. And like I said, it uses all factory holes. You don't have to drill anything. You don't have to use extra hardware or all, anything. It all matches up perfectly. And uh, I'm looking forward to showing you this guy. So let's go ahead, let's remove the bumper. This is actually my first time removing the bumper on this car. So uh, it may take me a little bit longer than normal. On my SDI, I was able to do that pretty much with my eyes closed. But this is very similar. It's just a bolt on top, bolts in the wheel well, bolts underneath, and we'll be able to take this off. So let's go ahead, get the front bumper off, and I'll show you the next step. Right, guys so we got the front bumper off not too bad so on the top there's eight t30s uh, in the wheel wells there's three eight millimeters and there's also two eight millimeters on the inside going up connecting to the fender same thing on the other side and the bottom there's ten eight millimeters once you do that you'll be able to pull the bumper forward and if you have what I have which is the uh, cameras and also the parking sensors you have to unplug them and also this plug underneath, I'm not 100% sure what this is uh, to, but you need to unplug this, this goes on the bottom. But we got everything off. Man, I gotta say, this bumper 
is one of my favorite stock bumpers ever, especially with the carbon lip and the M Performance uh, little splitters there. Looks beautiful. Now we have our first look at the stock front chassis brace. So that is what we're gonna be removing. However, in order to gain access to that, we have to remove the front crash beam. So in order to move the front crash beam, there's these bolts right here. These are 13 millimeters. So we're gonna go ahead and remove two there and then two on the passenger side and we'll be able to slip this right out. All right, so I got the four uh, 13 millimeters removed. This one on the outside is hard to remove since the headlight is right in the way. So what I did was remove the one screw right here and it gave me enough wiggle room to kind of snake that bolt out. So now we can pull the whole crash beam off and we can gain access to where we need to be. All right, so now the last piece that we need to remove is this air ducting down below. You simply just pull towards you and it unclips from the little area. So let's go ahead and pop everything off and we can take this piece off. All right, so now is a good opportunity to kind of vacuum up the radiator and any leaves or bugs that have been caught in here for years because you never took the bumper off like myself since this is my first time. So I actually cleaned up the uh, coolers on each side, radiator and everything over here. I didn't get everything out because I didn't want to damage too many of the fins. But uh, yeah, it's a good opportunity to clean everything up. So go ahead and clean that up. But now that we have access to the bar, here is what we're looking at. So there's actually one, two, and then there's a push clip in there. And then there's two bolts coming from the engine bay up there that we're going to remove. So. Once we remove those, we'll be able to slip this out. Then we're just gonna reuse all of the stock hardware, putting the uh, new lower class garage front chassis bar in. So take a look at this, and in a little bit, you'll be able to see how much better this is gonna look. All right, so the chassis bar is ready to go out. However, I have some uh, a little bit of an update. Now, you guys know I run the Eventury intake and uh, coming across an issue because the way that the uh, little snorkels, the little inlets right here are mounted are these little holes down there on the stock chassis bar. Now, on the lower class garage, there's no holes there, so I'm not able to run the scoops. Uh, I'm going to try to figure out a different way to mount them up. Uh, we'll see if there's any bracketry or something I can figure out. But as of right now, the bar, the low class garage bar does not include those little uh, holes. So I'm not able to mount it up. Pretty easy solution, but I figured I'd mention it. Uh, but either way, let's go ahead. Let's get this out of the car and compare the stock one to the low class garage one. All right, so here we are, we got them side by side. I mean, it's just crazy how much nicer the lower class garage one is. This one is way beefier, way heavier. So uh, it's great because it's gonna add some serious uh, overall rigidity to the front end. But even if we take a look at the back of this thing, this thing weighs like a pound, it is hollow. So as you can see, it's just a piece of bent metal and kind of cut out and rounded. So nothing crazy about it. Uh, I can't imagine this really does that much. But this thing is probably three times the weight and it's completely closed off and just way nicer. Also, some little update uh, on my STI one. Uh, these holes on the uh, bars were open, so they added a little uh, end cap, which is really nice so no water gets in or anything. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's slip this into place, kind of get everything lined up and install it. So I am super thrilled because I was able to get this mounted. All I did was drill a 3 16th hole and I had a uh, little metal bracket. And all I did was screw the bracket into the actual brace and then used a uh, screw and nut 
to tie down the actual scoop. So it's actually on there even uh, more firm than it was uh, prior with just the push clips. And of course, I had titanium hardware sitting around and everything worked beautifully. And uh, yeah, so pretty darn awesome. So just a note to lower class garage, you can drill a hole right on this bracket right here and um, you can mount your even cherry scoops. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other side. Uh, one thing I did wanna note is you do need to do some trimming up top here in the uh, little plastic uh, support up here. Not much at all, but you can see it kind of bumps up a little bit. I'm gonna try to find something to cover that up. Not a big deal. Um, it's kind of cool that the little color actually shows through, but I'll maybe figure something out to clean that up so you don't see that at all. And also these two bolts you don't use anymore since so it doesn't tie into the stock uh, brace. So I had some titanium nuts, so I just used those. So I'm able to still have the nice titanium there and it looks nice and clean. So. I'm really, really liking how this looks, but I gotta get the other scoop on and then we can wrap everything up. All right, so both scoops are in and the best part about it, the bracket that I installed gets covered by this little rubber piece. So you don't even see it. So just so you can see, there's the titanium bolts with the bracket and everything is on there nice and sturdy and in the exact same place that it was prior. So very, very happy with that. Now we can actually get to installing everything else back on the car. Right, so before we get to actually installing everything back, putting the bumper and all that, I just want to take a moment to appreciate the color match and how perfect that is. I am super, super, super thrilled with that. And uh, I really just tied in the blue and it's gonna look great behind the front bumper, behind the little kidney grills and everything. It's gonna look awesome. And the really cool part about the Eventuri carbon uh, ducts is that they, sorry, not good light, but they completely clear the entire bar. So it's not touching at all. And uh, it's almost like it was made for the carbon ducts. <laughs> really happy about that. Uh, and yeah, it is a really, really nice piece. Everything lined up perfectly. There was no kind of maneuvering around. Uh, oh, awesome. One thing I wanted to mention is that you use this bolt here to tie into the top uh, screw. You actually have to remove the little uh, C-clip the one of these things, remove that so you can screw this bolt directly into the insert into the uh, front chassis bar. So just wanted to mention that, uh, but yeah, I mean, look how cool that looks. It's amazing, small details, but overall it really, really makes a difference and it kind of sets your car apart from everything else, so. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is put the bumper back, get everything kind of situated. Most likely I'll catch back up with you guys tomorrow in the daylight so you guys get a little bit better look. Uh, because obviously I'm just putting everything back and you already see me take it off But let me get everything on and I'll catch back up with you guys tomorrow to show you a little bit more of a detailed look All right, so one just a little quick note you need to trim out this piece a little bit So it fits around the bar. So it's just a little snip with some scissors. It's just plastic not hard to actually uh, Trim out so you need to trim that out for this bar to get through then everything just clips back in All right guys, following day, cars all back together and I am absolutely loving this. It is such a minor detail, but it adds a nice pop of color to the front end. It's nothing too bright. And like I said in the previous clips, it matches the uh, Golden Wrench Supply cap set very, very well and it looks fantastic. It's crazy the overall difference, the quality from this compared to the stock brace. The stock brace I can pretty much just bend uh, over my knee, whereas this one would be very, very hard to do that if near impossible. Now, if you're interested in picking one of these up, I'm gonna leave the link to Lower Class Garage down in the description below. As I mentioned earlier, you can pretty much pick whatever color you want. They can do paint matches, they can do crazy colors, they can do whatever it is that you desire. And I gotta say the professionalism, the overall quality, everything about Logo Cross Garage uh, is fantastic. This is the second one that I've had. My one on the STI it was amazing. It held up very, very well for the couple years that I did have it with that car. Uh, and it didn't chip or anything like that. It fit beautifully. I had no issues whatsoever. And again, it was one of those things that people just absolutely loved. Uh, every time I posted a picture of it or a video, they always asked me what that bar was behind my grill. And now I'm very, very happy to have this on my M3. 
So I know I mentioned this in the other clips where you do have to do some trimming uh, for the top of the bar up here. Not that much and it's pretty easy to do. I just took a little Dremel, kind of Dremeled out the area where it needed to kind of pass through. I'm not sure in the future if they're going to revise that so you don't have to do any trimming. Maybe they will but for now it's not hard at all and I was able to knock that out no problem. Also very very thrilled that I was able to figure out a way to mount the even cherry brake ducts because I would have been upset if I wasn't able to use those because those things are beautiful obviously uh, very functional as well and it looks great with the bar up front it's so cool to see this whole entire car come together day by day i've been in the garage uh, very late almost every single day for the past month or two just doing as many mods as i can enjoying the process and really really taking this car to the next level the next few modifications that you guys are going to see are really really going to change this car in terms of the way it sits looks and sounds we're going to start dipping into the more fun stuff wheel suspension exhaust i promise you those are going to be really fun videos i cannot wait to make those for you guys show you how to install and just give you an idea of truly what i have envisioned in my mind of this car for many many years this is something that i've dreamed about for a long time. And one of the coolest things about this car is that I have been able to document this car from day one. Literally picking up the car, actually even talking about before I even got this car, uh, all the way up until today from where it is currently. With my STI, I started making videos about two or three years into my ownership. So you guys being able to see it from completely stock form uh, up until today and wherever we go is pretty awesome. I love doing this stuff. I really enjoy making the videos and kind of uh, helping you guys out on installs and reviews and all that stuff. It has been a lot of fun. I really do enjoy it. And um, this FADM3 has been an absolute blast. All right, guys, so I'm going to wrap the video up here. I hope you guys enjoyed the install of the lower class garage front chassis bar. Again, I'm going to leave the uh, website and all the information down in the description below. If you guys are interested in picking one up, highly recommend it. You can follow this video of how to install it. Shipping was super Super duper fast even with this custom color and I can't thank Lower Crest Garage enough for sending this out to me and obviously being able to make this video for you guys showing you a really cool modification that not many M3 or BMW owners are aware of just yet so hopefully this catches on hopefully a lot of you guys pick this thing up because it is absolutely awesome and I love the way it turned out. If you guys have any questions at all about the Lower Crest Garage bar or anything else on the M3 leave it in the comments below but in the meantime keep it clean keep it simple and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you.